I invested most of my research and career into looking into some models of abstraction like mathematics or computational models in order to create this uh, connective hinge between material world and the world of design. So to increase in a way designability of matter, if you wish, in a kind of natural sense. And I think architecture, for instance, I always thought is traditionally this kind of uh, synthesizing field or synthetic field. It has, uh, if it has one superpower, let's say, uh, it, it has this kind of power to synthesize multiple agencies together. So I just wanted to accelerate or amplify this ability of design. Um, so that is maybe in a nutshell what I'm doing <laughs> at a very global scale. Yes, there are many shifts and I think many people are trying to redefine it at the moment and, and also there is not one kind of global um, sentence I, I could give you but perhaps there are lots of micro streams because the change never comes as a big flip, it's always some sort of critical mass that accumulates and at the moment we are in this kind of infancy or primordial soup of development of so these different uh, researches and mine is one of them as well. So. I mean, definitely things are changing from this. One, one of the big changes is, for instance, that traditionally architects used to work uh, in a very representational way, that they would imagine something, something in their head, some sort of sculptural piece, or how the uh, building looks like, or how it's supposed to look like based on previous references, and then um, draw it or, or create a sculpture or a model and then uh, give it, to instance, uh, for instance, to, to structural engineers to build it or rationalize it. Now this is kind of turned upside down because at the moment architects have ability to um, go in, in the middle of it, to, to sample data from material science, to sample data from structure, from the site, a particular ge geological, geographical location or particular winds or, or wet, uh, weather of a, a location where the building occurs. And within that kind of deeply informed field, uh, um, uh, sort of derive or generate design, also with the kind of participation of uh, computational models that is uh, a new territory at the moment. So again, there is this kind of very complex synthesis happening at the moment that is where you actually derive designs that go way beyond your imagination rather than this kind of traditionally what I imagine or my preconception of what design could be. So especially at this point then uh, uh, we are questioning of what is even, what design or architecture could actually be. It's not uh, a definite answer. Basically, in my mind, uh, the movement in architecture that was called green architecture in the 60s and, and so forth, I think it failed miserably because in some ways uh, not only produced extremely ugly architecture, I apologize to some exceptional architects that, that don't belong to this group, but in general, but also uh, the focus was all, always on isolated system. Let's uh, let's optimize one system without looking at the whole ecology of design. That is now changing in a sense that we have ability to kind of, as I was mentioning before, bind these systems together and develop multiple um, aspects of, of a design working together. So it's not just one super optimized facade and yet that doesn't talk to a structure, for instance, or doesn't talk to production process, so you get lots of waste in other areas. And then also if we talk about something, let's say building skins, for instance, I think that is also through the development of material science, through development of new manufacturing, fabrication methods, and development of this kind of computational synthesis that is giving us uh, uh, much more possibilities. Perhaps in a very near future, the skin of design will be closer to let's say our biological skin in terms of how it can uh, process uh, all these physics uh, that, that we find in the environment. So yes, in terms of responsiveness, in terms of uh, being uh, embedded into the, its, its ecology that it exists, it, I think uh, design is at the moment going through a huge uh, evolution. For me, 
the word sustainable is almost a little bit problematic because it's abused in some ways in some of these uh, in some of these contexts that I was mentioning before, optimizing one particular system or something like this. I, I prefer almost the word ecology or ecology of design where uh, we really go beyond just uh, sustainable and also because idea of, uh, maybe this will sound a bit complicated now, but the idea of sustainability is also bound to this idea of nature as something that we need to protect and that is this perfect thing that uh, um, uh, needs protecting, yet if you really look at the reality of it, uh, I mean, and, and also history of nature. Nature is full of, of catastrophic events. It's part of its evolution and in a way it can absorb it and already now you cannot uh, find a part of the earth that doesn't have already air mutated with different, perhaps some, some uh, for instance, plants in, in Amazon would actually be endangered if you actually take some uh, uh, ingredients uh, from the environment that were not here maybe uh, 100,000 years ago because again uh, it adapts the constant adaptation of the nature so I'm interested in this kind of going straight in right into this kind of idea of complex synthesis uh, that opens nature for, for access rather than keeping it under this kind of uh, glass bubble in a way so the, the notion of sustainability I think we need to rethink it in a, in a much kind of more resilient uh, frame uh, time travel. <laughs>